In the last video, we used the decision tree to organize the information that we needed to apply a Bayes' theorem to calculate a certain probability. Now, I, in this video, I want to use a different uh, way of organizing the data. So let's review the problem. So we have a disease that's possessed by 1% of the population. Now there's a screening test for this, which will test positive for 90% of the people that have the disease, but there are unfortunately some false positives, namely 15% of the people that, that uh, if a person doesn't have disease, the test will identify 15% as actually having it. And what we want to do is determine What's the probability that if the test is positive, the person really has the disease? Now, we set up these uh, designations of sets, people who have the disease and those who test positive. So the information in the problem, the probabilities are given by these conditional probabilities or outright probabilities, and we want to determine the uh, probability here. Now, so the definition of a conditional probability, the probability a person who has, who tests positive, actually has the disease, can be calculated in this way. And we saw that we can evaluate these parts by making a certain decision tree, where we looked at uh, whether the person had the disease or did not have the disease, and then whether or not they tested positive or tested negative, and so forth. And then we filled out the values of this with numbers. Now, actually, I probably should have written the uh, Bayes' theorem out there so you can see the ugly details. So let's just quickly do that now. Uh, how do we calculate that numerator? Well, the numerator is going to be the along this top line. So this is just going to be the probability that a person has the disease times the probability, the conditional probability that they test positive given they have the disease. And then that's divided by what? Well, the probability they test positive, which we identified was going to be the uh, these two classes here. So that's going to be the same term as we use the numerator for the first item there, probability. D, if I can write, times the probability they test positive, given they have the disease, plus what? Well, the probability they do not have the disease times the probability that if they do not have the disease, then they will test positive. Okay, so, so there you see this, and this is the statement of Bayes' theorem. So it's a kind of a confusing statement uh, with lots of primes and conditional probabilities and things. And so uh, that's why if you just calculate from the decision tree, it's a little more straightforward. Okay, now uh, let me uh, erase this, and then we will look at uh, another technique for evaluating this. Okay, uh, now let's look at another way of organizing this information to calculate this conditional probability here. Well, let's do it with a table. So let's set up uh, the... Uh, the rows to designate whether or not the person has the disease or a person does not have the disease. And then we'll set up the columns to indicate whether or not the person is going to test positive T or test negative T prime. And then we want to look at some totals. Okay, now the key to applying, so we want to calculate the prob conditional probability by putting some numbers in a table. Now the key here is to choose a population with a large enough size that when we multiply all these probabilities and, and get people, we're actually going to get whole numbers. So let's take, say, a population of size 10,000. Now, what's the first condition here? It says that 1% of the people had the disease. So if I take 1% of 10,000, that gives me 100 people. That's why I chose 10,000. Now, uh, the second condition here says that if a person has the disease, then our test will be positive 90% of the time. So I have to take 90% of 100, 
and that says there should be 90 people that fall into this category. Of course, there'll be 10 people that fall into this category, but we don't even need them. Now, we are going to need the number of people who do not test positive. So 100 from uh, 10,000 should be 9,900. Again, it's not a difficult arithmetic. And now, what about this condition here? Well, we know there's 9,900 people who do not have the disease, but 15% of them will test positive. So down here in this cell, we're going to have to calculate what 15% times 9,900 is going to be. Okay, well, it's a little calculator there. Well, okay, so this would be 1,485. Okay, now we're almost really, well, we're ready now that we've got some values in this table to compute this conditional probability. Now, what is the conditional probability going to be? Well, it's going to be what fraction of the people that test positive. So if I look at all the people that test positive here, okay, that's going to be the sum of these two, and that's not too hard. That's uh, 1575. So what fraction of the 1575 people who test positive are actually have the disease? Well, just 90 of those. So we have to calculate uh, this uh, probability. And if you remember when we did this before with the trees, it's exactly the same numbers, except there was a whole bunch of decimal places here uh, to make it look like a, a smaller type of and so when we calculate that out, that came out to be 6.2%, 0.062. So it's exactly the same numbers. It's just that we arrange the numbers and, and their integers in this case. Now, the key if you apply tables to calculate uh, a probability like this is to choose the right kind of sample size here so you don't have to deal with fractions of people. Well, I think this is a, uh, a technique works a little better than decision trees. You can uh, use your own judgment. Thank you.